Do, do we know if he pushed record before he walked away? Well, based on the fact that it said this meeting is being recorded. No, Jeff, that was what Jeff just did. That was, Jeff. Oh, that was oh. me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then I don't think he I did. don't think he did. Is me so? Oh, there he is. Did you push record, Mental, before you walked away? Did you push record, record before you walked away? No. Okay, but, we'll push record. But, but, but now I'm recording. All right. Then we can go. Welcome to Everyone Racers, a show designed for the world of low dollar racing and oddball car culture. It doesn't matter what kind of lemma champ or lucky track dog league you run, SCC or NASA, we won't discriminate as long as you drive it hard and built it yourself. Even if you just put down the tools 30 seconds ago to join the podcast, <laughs> join us each week for tech discussion, tips, tricks, news and notes in the world of amateur endurance racing, whether it's on the spot, hella sweet, or we're lucky enough and Chrissy gives us just the tip. We're sure you'll giggle a little and learn even less. Everyone report to the paddock. Wait, what was that next song? I don't know what that was. <laughs> it was a, some sort of monkey song. Hockey monkey. Hockey monkey. Now YouTube is going to be mad at us. Stop it. Yeah, Stop yeah, it. it. No, no, it's right. Yeah, yeah. YouTube it's not like we monetize it anyway. Less than 10 seconds. It doesn't seconds matter. Okay. They'll make it'll, it go cut mute it off. or so. Yeah. yeah what, what less than 10 seconds. Okay. okay. Who, go to the paddock. Uh, yeah, this is Chris. <laughs> this is Chrissy. I'm Jeff. <laughs> Oh my God! I'm what a mental. mess! Oh, wow! Oh. And we are we are ever in racers. Thanks for coming back and listening to a nice episode of our podcast, it's episode one ninety four. We're recording it on June 9th. Nice. I'm still driving to work, and the coffee hasn't kicked in. That makes it six nine. Got it. Oh. Got it. Took me a minute. I'm like going. It's nice. 109, episode 194. Why is he saying nice? Uh, if you're not nice. engaged in, in that sort of thing, and you shouldn't be listening to us because that's just weird. Uh, anyway, check out check out our bingo card. It's revised, new and improved. So uh, what are you all working on? Because I know we're all working on something right now. Who wants to start off this hot, sweaty time? Mental go first because nice. I think he's the sweatiest. I'm not actually. We oh, were yeah? just talking he's, about that. He's in the uh, desert. He, they don't sweat. Like it's yeah. not as bad uh, as, as it is here. The the pool. It took the pool a week to get below uh, 85 degrees, but it's even then it was still nice. Uh, so, but I did uh, wrestle my garage back into submission after literally months of like working on something and then running away and then working on something and running away. So, it was an all day affair. Sunday got up pulled everything off the benches, put everything back in its spot, knew where everything was missing, and. Uh, I uh, got it all organized and pretty again so I can find stuff. Rolled the Yoda back in there because I still haven't had a chance to even check that clutch and transmission to make sure that it is a clutch. And ideally, I can get that fixed and start doing that. And I began, uh, because it has been 104, uh, a rebuild of my garage swamp cooler that I got for free last year and worked great for two days till the fan motor gave out. Bought a new fan motor. And by the time I circled back around to it, it was fall. So, you know, why bother? And I'll probably get this one fixed right in time for it to cool off. Uh, for those of us who don't live in the desert, please explain what a swamp cooler is. I know because my friend used to live in Albuquerque, but I'm not sure everyone in podcast land does. Fair enough. It is an evaporative oil, uh, air cooler. So it uses water to lower the temperature. So this one actually, you attach a hose to it and it pumps it down through two filter elements where it sucks in air and in doing so reduces the air temperature and then blows that cooler air out. So it's called a swamp cooler because it obviously uses water. So it's going to vastly increase humidity. So for the first time in two years, I had to take apart something rusty. Wow. Bolts broken <laughs> crap like that. So <laughs> I, I, I hear these are more effective in dry ass climates because yes, air conditioners must evaporate water from the air. And if there is no air to eva water in the air to evaporate, mm -hmm. they just yeah. don't basically work. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's just, it's a, it's a cheap, you'll, you'll see a lot of shops and garages use them. It's the same concept as misters, your favorite yeah. watering hole. Well, cause imagine if you're in Atlanta and you're just blowing humid air at you yourself oh, yeah, no, or like misery. Pennsylvania <laughs> right, exactly. and right, yeah. New Jersey yeah. right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that this makes perfect sense. If you're in a kind of place that, that can have it. Like, I think the old school versions even just had like a bale of hay with water and a and fan, the fan and blows off like that. It right yeah. Now. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And cool. as the water evaporates, yeah, it drops the, the water temperature. Yep. Great. All right. Who's next? Me next. It is I'll go next. Sure. 
Um, what do we want first? The wrenching story or the story of woe slash intrigue slash Wakeman problems? Oh, bust included- out the wrenching story so we can pic- make fun of you for the whole wake. Why is this even a conversation? No, 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 you know the, how the this is going to go. Problems is different than the wrenching story. I know. So tell the wrenching story because we need to, because once you start the Wakeman problems, we're like, you know, well, and this my one, dog with a tennis ball. We're not letting that one go. Well, th- and this one technically was like my wife potentially getting arrested. So that's like a bonus oh, point. Oh, even better. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, go for it's it. It's like many Wakemans. Okay, so we'll do wrenching first. Uh, Z work. It's all about the brakes and the hubs and the wheels. And um, for those of you who don't remember, and I know we'll talk about this later in the show, we were having a little bit of brake problems in the Z. Um, so I disassembled the rear rotors, put in some ARP studs. I uh, went to the front of the, ooh, did the FedEx man just show up? Oh no, it's my wife. Sorry. I'm excited by the FedEx man. I'll get to that in a second. Pulled apart the front rotors, tapped the lugs out, disassembled the brakes so we could figure out what was wrong. Found some sketchy pins in the rotors. So I bought a whole new hardware pins set. And and I'm rotors. Putting the the pins in the calipers, excuse me, caliper okay. pins. Uh, Cause they are like the full floating kind that you just slide the, the, uh, pads out like you don't have to pull the rotors so anyway so we found some sketchy pins so i ordered a whole new like hardware set and then i pressed out all of the lugs you know with big freaking hammer and the lugs that i bought didn't go back in thank you arp studs they were the right size we thought but they weren't they fit the back right they fit the back so the back because, and the front have yeah, different because lug nissan sizes. not because, because of arp nissan. studs because exactly. 90s nissan 90s Nissan. It turns out that 240s and 300ZXs both have the same problem. And because we are changing the thread pitch so that the thread pitch matches the Mazda so that way our lug nuts work in every single race car. And the Honda too. And the Honda. Yeah. All of them are now all going to match. Nobody freaking has the studs. Like I could have got the studs with the 125 thread pitch all day long not from arp though actually from nissan companies uh but to find the 150 thread pitch arp studs with the right knurling and you have to look all this shit up and it's really hard to figure out uh i had to buy them they work for evos mitsubishi evolutions and i don't know what you rally mother humpers are doing out there but they're sold out everywhere so i got one from amazon and one from Pegasus. One from Amazon has arrived, and I'm waiting for the, the guy to show up right now with my set from Pegasus. It is currently 8.52 p.m. on Wednesday. You're not getting it. Six, the nine. 6th. 6th, 9th. Nice. Yeah. Scheduled delivery Wednesday, June 9th by the end There's of today. There's still a possibility. Still might be there. So anyway... Uh, yeah, I guess I'm not going to work tomorrow because we could go to the race. Can you piece together five studs from? No, the I can go buy out? some five. I because they would be the wrong thread pitch. I would just go buy five new ones because once five you hammer on them, yeah. No, no. Well, I guess I could go five Evo ones. That way, they'd know. be the right size, right, right size and thread pitch. pitch. Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll, we'll we'll figure that out tomorrow. Hopefully, the uh, guy will show up. Right now, I have 90% of one side put back together, and then I ran out of light, so then I came home. Okay, so you're going to, you're not feeling well for tomorrow? <laughs> ain't, no, ain't no glaucoma. <laughs> <laughs> race car. <clears throat> Coming down with race car, needing wrenching. Um, so, okay, story of Wakeman slash Woe. Yeah, we need this story. Entry. Let's yeah. go. Um, so, anyway. Uh, uh, I am working on the Z and I text my brother like, Hey, you coming over? I'm starting work. Uh, and I said, Oh, by the way, did you get the tires? You know, like we should take care of that. And this is Saturday. This is Sunday. And he says, didn't you already get the tires? Cause I worked Saturday. So we didn't wrench on Saturday. I said, no. Why do you think I would have gotten the tires? He said, cause I shipped them to your house, not to my house. Now he lives three blocks from me, by the way. I now, think, all oh. your all the projects at your house. So make yeah, sure yeah, you yeah. have a and, and also, like, he works weird hours. You're somewhat predictable. I'm not That's... predictable. Jim works at he, home. He He's... works at home. He never leaves the house. Yeah. But anyway, his hair. But I have the truck, you know, so you sure deliver him here. Uh, so anyway, so I say, mm, didn't get him. And he responds back. Fuck. I delivered them to your old house in Hewitt. 
Holy crap. Are you kidding? For those of you who don't know, this is, is it, the other is side Jim, of New Jersey. Is it Jim like the smartest of all of us? Uh, you know, there's a. De- <laughs> I, I, I'm going to say you could click the wrong link and end up having it go to the wrong place pretty easily. If that is saved in your, if that's saved in your, I feel like I usually check that. I'm not going to go there. So this is the the only reason I usually check it is because I've made that mistake. Yeah, yeah. You you make it once and then it becomes like a thing. So this is where the sketchiness begins. You think the sketchiness is? I I'm waiting for Chris to get back because this is where the sketchiness really. Oh, he can hear. He can hear. 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 It's Bluetooth. Yeah. Oh, okay. So. Jen says, well, I'll text our old neighbor and I'll see if they got him. So she texts the old neighbor and she says, hey, do you have the phone number for the people who own our house now? Uh, Like we delivered our tires there. And the neighbor went, oh, you're screwed. They're assholes. (laughs) So she texted, I have the text thread here to prove it. Catastrophe. Catastrophe. So I told the old neighbors that used to live in your house, this is from the neighbor that we like, that they could ship their race tires to my house because my mom would be home. Her brother had them shipped to their old address by accident. Did you get there? Did they get there yet? I assume they didn't send it because it never got to my house. And they asked me and I was like, what? I told her I'd reach out to the neighbors. Her response was, girl, I had them fuckers sold. They were stupid. They could have tracked the fucking things. Ups. Wow. Wow. My wife blew a gasket. Oh. She no. said, those motherfuckers. She, she, immediately, I was on the phone to the local police department. Local police department said, you can't make a report on the phone, so you'll have to come in. My wife said, I'm going. She tell. got in her car I and drove she drove two hours, yeah, two and, two and a half hours, two and a half hours to fill out a police report. And the the po- police officer basically said, "Oh, yeah, Skippy, young Skippy over there, he could take the report." And young Skippy takes the report and then he hands it to the desk sergeant. And the desk sergeant goes, "Twenty five Regler." Uh, can you wait here? I'll go knock on their door. So it seems that the police know this address. <laughs> oh, they went and wow. they knocked on the door because my wife said, I don't think they sold them. They were delivered like 48 hours ago. These are like kind of specialized. I don't think anybody really yeah. wants these things. Like, they were I just mean, hunting, hunting for money. Yeah. Yeah. So unless you like sold them for 10 bucks. I don't, so the cop went up, knocked on the door and they were like, oh, I was only kidding. Of course I have them. So the police department, Man. police officer helped them load them into the, like the front of the driveway. You guys remember I had a big, long driveway. Yeah. Well, and, and people well, don't really know where you used to live. I mean, drive some on up. Might. You're, up. It's in the middle of freaking nowhere. Middle of so nowhere. It's not like Woods. they're selling them in the middle of like a town even. Like if we put them out front of yeah. our house, we could sell them. You live, you have three neighbors around you. According to the neighbor that we like. Yeah. yeah they're sketchy. They have police at their house all the time, including some of them are their friends. So we think we got lucky with a cop who knew them and said, this bitch just drove three hours. This police report is going to happen. She is not going to let go unless I get those tires back to her. That's kind well, of amazing. And, 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 we, and I say this complimentary because we actually all do really love Jen. But Jen puts out that kind of a vibe of... Well, when she gets all North Jersey, and which, find yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, she's like, yeah. she's like, you're, yeah. you're basically gonna do this, and that's just, you know. So the police officer said, "Would you like to go up and knock on the door?" And she said, "I don't trust my mouth." And the cop went, <laughs> "I get it. I'll go do it for you." Wow. <laughs> Wow, yep. this is a great story. Yep. yep she yep. also has, she also has a lot of EQ to understand that. <laughs> yeah. So, listener yeah. feedback yeah. time. If you have a suggestion for what I should do, I don't know, mail a bag of dicks. Somebody <laughs> suggested, uh, somebody suggested the uh, sugar-free gummy bears. Have you heard about sugar-free? Oh, that's oh, a yeah. good one. Oh, yeah. absolutely. So we're we're trying to decide what we're going to accidentally oh. drop ship to their house now. My goodness, and maybe bees. Um, and I'm not, lots I'm of not, bees. I'm not saying we should do that. I'm just saying 
perhaps if 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 some of our listeners just you know had an address or something if, if anybody wants to text me i'll send them the address <laughs> except he just <laughs> said it out loud I didn't well say he it just now. said oh, the yeah. street address so if well, you've got if you've got if you our can figure out the racers, spelling of the street you probably yeah, have in, three different options in jersey it's in New <laughs> or, jersey. yeah or if if you've got our everyone racers text number you know, some of our more creative listeners. You know, if you just search the the just the address without yeah. the state, even I know it pulls up the right house. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. because it's like the only one. You have I to spell know. it right, but still. Yeah. Well, I hey. don't condone doing anything illegal. Mm. No, not funny. illegal. Funny, Bog poo, exactly. whatever. Yeah. And drop don't shipping is funny. That's drop not illegal. Funny, yeah. And clearly, they're entrepreneurial. She'll resell her sugar. Resell gummy those bags. sugar-free gummy oh, bears. Mamble anyway. subscriptions. No. <laughs> <laughs> only lamb subscriptions. No, Chrissy, Chrissy, only please. lambs is only for good people to see creepy stuff. That's Bad true. people don't get to see only lambs. Uh, by the way, Yuri started an only lambs account. You should check it out. Hensel, aren't you on that site? Not, not by any fault of my own. Well, sure. <laughs> only, Nobody only, is. <laughs> only by association no with lemons. No one is. Yes. Nobody so, wants to. Oh, anyway. Yes. Okay, let's Chris and Chrissy, on. tell us about a race car that's I finished. did what Chris did, <sighs> Chris, uh, plus more packing for the race. Chris, what are you up to? Well, I was in here last week to talk about what I was doing because I was working on the boat. And that's really what I was. Finished, I finished the boat finally. We finished the boat. Really, but I was working on it last great. week. It looks It does fantastic. look great. We did it right. Put three coats of paint on with a sprayer. And I got to give a props to the Eastwood Concours L100 sprayer is wonderful. It's specifically for lower um, flow home compressors. So Ooh. it, my compressor was not running full time to do it. And it's only a 30 gallon compressor. So Eastwood makes great. such great stuff. I mean, they, they should totally sponsor us. We haven't said that in a long time, but we use a lot of their gear. Yeah. So a uh, great work. I'm really happy with that, um, that pink. And I was going to use the $15 Purple Harbor Freight one, but the tip size wasn't right. And I couldn't get a different size tip. This one had the right size tip, you know, and I couldn't buy just the tip for the other one. And that was the problem. So, but this nice. one worked great. So props to Eastwood as usual. And then more sanding. Christy and I were out wet sanding in the rain, buffing, um, installed a, a, a simulated teak floor that actually is, a, is really good. Um, it sands like wood. Like you, you just put 60 grit sandpaper on it and it gets a texture of wood and works just like it. It's really impressive stuff. Um, re-rig the motor, re-rig the console, got the boat ready. Boat's in the water. It's wonderful. Right. Is, is, is that Eastwood LVP gun only 80 bucks too? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So that's going in the show notes, that link. Fantastic. Yeah. Totally impressed by that. That was great. And lastly, um, Chrissy and I picked up the Corvette. So that was fun. We are extra rad now. I was uh, laughing maniacally, but I had myself muted. So I'll do it again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Corvette has been sitting for 15 years. It smells terrible from it smells, the and he creatures. And Febreze on it. Because I found some Febreze. I but think, it doesn't I help. It. It's making it smell worse. Well, How I does Febreze make it smell worse? Because it smelled bad in the first place, and it was musty, and it's and there's we have no air that's b- going anywhere because it's so freaking hot here, and so he's just sprays. Ugh, ugh, I vacuumed smells, it. It smells like I, bad Febreze now. Yeah, I vacuumed it. I got a battery charger on it enough to pop the hatch and put the windows down, and then I've just left a box fan in the car. Just is this inside or outside your house? Well, it's in, in the, the garage, garage, but the doors garage. are open. But the doors are open. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, yeah, Corvette, we did a lot of trailer swapping to return the U-Haul trailer, get the new trail, get our trailer, got new tires on the trailer, new, got extra, uh, new set for the new set of wheels and tires for the Mazda, uh, new hand cooks on the 18s for the Mazda. Anyway, it's all, we loaded up tonight. We're trailers loaded, trucks half loaded. Yeah. I've been doing a lot. Been super, super busy. That's cool. exciting. I think that's enough. Yeah. Is it time for news and notes? Hey! News and notes time. In news that probably only I care about, our former guest and Hooniverse and Auto Nation guy, Jeff Glucker, tells us that the Jaguar F-Type is now limiting their engine options to only V8s. 
previously you could get it with a four, a six, or even a supercharged six in addition to the eight cylinder. But the 2022 version only has one power plant with a couple of options. The new F type P450 is available as a Cooper convertible, rear wheel drive, all wheel drive, starts at just over 70 grand. It gets a supercharged five liter V8, 444 horsepower, 428 foot pounds. Of course, the top of the line type f type r has the same engine but it makes 575 and can only be had with all-wheel drive now jeff adds that quote this makes move sense although we will say the 380 horsepower v6 manual was pretty good i actually agree having driven that car and if i can find one and use in a couple of years the manual you know, yeah the supercharged oh, v6 shoot. manual was sexy Ooh. sounding i mean too. the whole well, it doesn't matter the whole car is Awesome. They're very pretty. Oh they are gosh. so pretty. Yes, yes. Yeah. Wow. The uh, w- woman who lived next door to me on 25 Regler Road had a V6. <laughs> <laughs> was she wow. the nice one? Wow. No, she was. Uh, uh, th- this is a just this is this woman was not as part of the story at all. So, uh, okay. She was just a nice lady. Actually, she was a motorcycle racer and uh, did a lot of racing down at the NJMP and uh, it was pretty cool. Okay, so apparently I want to be her when I grow up because she sounds awesome. Okay, I, I hate to do this in the, but somebody just highlighted all of the notes, so just don't push delete. Okay, okay, good. Okay. Thanks. Right, perfect. <laughs> I just just Sorry, was trying was, to undo was, it. That was me doing the 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 links. Okay, is it un is it unhighlighted? Yep. Yeah, you're good. Yep. Okay, it's good. Cool. Sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. Okay. I don't like to to do that, but I just didn't want everything to go away real fast. Um, <laughs> do you enjoy F1? I hope you do. Uh, do you yes. like you? Yeah, U.S. Grand Prix. You probably do. Well, this I uh, might get you might get seconds this year. Hazel Southwell from the Drive tells us how a second uh, U.S. race might happen, and the world is still emerging from the Rona. So, F and the F one schedule is still all over the freaking place. So, the Canadian GP was canceled, replaced by Turkey. Then Turkey had to be canceled because of travel restrictions of the country. France was going to be a move to this week. Uh, mo- note more on that later. The Red Bull ring is retained from 2020 and two days ago was announced that Singapore race was canceled. Singapore race was canceled. As Haley says, after 2020, F1 is determined to be, have its 23 race calendar this year. Uh, add that, add in the very specific F1 track requirements and there are three possible solutions. First, the it is a potential potential return to the Shanghai circuit in China, which has been run since the 20, 2019 because of the pandemic. Second would be a, fa- a fall attempt at Turkey already canceled once. The third is the race in Texas is a second race in Texas. Stay that tuned. would be so sweet. Ah! Uh, stay tuned as the, we, uh, if we, as soon as we hear anything, we'll, we will let you know. In the meantime, join our fantasy league. Link in the notes. Even if you're already in another league, you can join ours. Keep the uh, and keep your points. As Ian from Apex Jason found out that when he came uh, came to our league, he found himself in second. Second is way better than Mental and Jeff, who clearly suck at this. I again forgot to make any predictions. I have to say, I'm notably in third by chance, and most of it's yeah. by chance. Not only did I make predictions. My number one team driver won on so did mine. Teams. So did mine. So that's why we well, didn't. That's why you, you didn't catch me because I had the same thing. And nobody picked the podium. Wait, you no, wait, nobody picked no. the podium. Yeah, it's yeah. like, what? Uh, who would do, do that? that? Oh my yeah. gosh. And I, tra- a- I traded Seb. He like came in second. I got well, right who thought Seb was going to come in second? No. I mean, like, not even Seb. Yeah. Right. <laughs> He's like, like, no. Yeah. You this know what is, I? This is you know the what I most noticed? excited podium in a long time. Those yes. guys were Who? all yes. They were right? drunk. And the rest mm. of the all the normal podium people were like just sad because they're like, wait, nobody's cheering for me. This, no? <laughs> this isn't an F one show, but I have two things I want to say. One, oh please, Seb. Why is he still rocking the pink helmet with BWT on it? Like, because they're like, still a sponsor of of that team. Uh, uh, um, Oh, they are. I did not last know year that. they they're were a title sponsor. They're just now they're they're not it's giving not quite the as cognizant, much. Cognizant Got it. Work. Well, he didn't paint yeah. his helmet. I guess whatever. The, the, and then, the helmet in F one, the helmet money goes to the driver. Goes to the driver. Yeah, I'm aware of that. But anyway, and then another thing I want to say is we're not going to talk about the race. This is not an F one podcast. Uh, but Pirelli's got some. But some oh, shit explain to, to explain do. to do. Oh, yeah. to do. <laughs> Somebody's yeah. getting fired. They're like, they're like, oh, oh. they hit something. No, no. they oh. didn't. The it was a, it point. was a debris. It was a <laughs> debris. Boopity. Boopity. In the same place on the track. 
Yeah. Yes, Ooh, it's we... the same to me. It's not anyway. the same. Debris. Oh my gosh, I could. We could go on. Do we have anything <laughs> else we want to talk about? Uh, I'm going to talk about something we all like, and that is trucks. Fine. Fine. No, uh, we were no. actually invited to the online reveal of the Ford small pickup. I had no idea. Mental, you put that in the notes. We got an mm-hmm. invite. You didn't tell us. Oh, yeah, I, 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 I still get all those emails. Oh, Rhonda, that's awesome. Rhonda with Ford Marketing. Absolutely. Well, we're, we're journalists. I don't know I if know you know I know we're journalists, that. but I didn't notice because I would have checked that out. Uh, it's called the Maverick, which is pretty cool. I don't know, resurrecting the name of the uh, small car from the 70s. Uh, but the internet agrees it's really a medium-sized pickup, not a small pickup, but it's still full of some neat stuff. It starts under $20,000. Entry-level powertrain is a hybrid. Gas. Uh, the gas part is an Atkinson cycle, four-cylinder, combined with a hybrid powertrain gets you 191 horsepower 155 pound feet of torque it's an estimated 40 miles per gallon in the city 500 mile range for the tank it's crazy it can haul 1500 pounds the hybrid 1500 pounds and has this really cool um i'm sorry that it can haul 1500 pounds it has this multi-cargo area flex bed thing they're trying to get a little too cute with the bed i'm gonna be honest with you uh, but it comes with an open source link so you can see what other people are doing with their maverick i don't know if you're really a maverick you don't care what the other people do um the hybrid <laughs> setup the hybrid setup can tow 2000 pounds um, they also have an EcoBoost, uh, the two liter EcoBoost with 250 horsepower, 277 pound feet of torque, and it gets an eight speed auto and can tow 4,000 pounds. Uh, link in the show notes is to a Jeff Glucker Auto Nation video review and Jason Torchinsky Jalopnik write up. I love small trucks. It's a unibody, right, Mental? You, it you is. Saw more of it. Yeah, I think more people should be driving little trucks with unibodies but people won't buy a honda ridgeline because you know it's a honda yeah, right all the all the ford lovers that called the honda ridgeline that's some kind that's of not queer, a real truck. That ain't a real that's truck a now they're like well, well oh, oh, oh. they're having a hard time with this okay they Hold are on. and it's it's like it's like a double thing too because now are they going to use their electric F-150s to block the superchargers at the electric station with the bro how, electric how do you, ah, oh, ah. yeah, yeah. So anyway, more people should buy this. Chris, hold on to your tookies here. Um, Nissan still sells 50,000 Frontiers a year. Yes, I looked it up. 54,000 Frontiers sold in 2020. All you idiots should stop buying them. And go buy a Ridgeline, or now you can buy. Well, a, and, and a how Ford many Maverick. of those? How many of those actually are like rental car fleets? Because I get offered. You could be right. I get offered Look, a Frontier a lot. You could. If be you right. want a brand new 2005 Nissan Frontier, you are in luck. <laughs> <laughs> true. True. But it is. I, I think it. It's. It's. It, Torchinsky said it in his article. It's. It's addressing this thing that everybody whines about that you can't get a cheap truck that you. You just. You know. I don't need to tow a fifth wheel i just need to be able to throw crap in it to you know do my yard and that kind of stuff that's perfect yeah. now you have an escape with a bed yeah if, it's a, if yeah. you're towing a motorcycle trailer or a or a pair of jet skis or this truck 15 is for foot you. boat or something yeah yeah, yeah a little little bass boat this this truck is for you mm-hmm and uh, Jeff, I just I threw the uh, Ford link to the uh, information Excellent. that they sent out to the journalist. Nice upcoming races. This weekend kicks off the Pacific Northwest Rally. Some really great stuff there. Two kit cars, an eighty American Fiber Craft Aquila. Never heard of that one. I'm sure it's terrible. And a '74 <laughs> Bradley GT that everyone knows those. <laughs> It's definitely terrible. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all, but also running is a 67 Volvo 122S wagon, 55 DeSoto, 79 Datsun 210 wagon, 78 Toyota, 76 Jeep CJ, 73 Jeep J20. Man, you know how you know it's in the Pacific Northwest? That. That's how you know. It's a, a lot of old Japanese cars. Um, best, craziest entry, though, is probably the Land Rover Discovery, 96. It's a terrible year for Land Rover Discoveries, even by Land Rover Discovery oh, no, standards. Oh, no, and it's going on a rally? Yep. This is a terrible idea. I, as a former Discovery owner, that's a bad year. As, as, as so, a Discovery owner that hated me, it's even yeah. worse. So th- they're going to be very comfortable until they're not, and then they're going to be very tragic. Uh, yeah, good luck, all. There's no way the suspension works on that. 
Now, fortunately, the older ones were all coil. Oh, that's they coil? Or they fixed it. They weren't air. Oh, because we had the air, and that's why. Yeah. Was, yeah. The air just didn't like you. Mental, does your wife still uh, miss it? No. Abs- honestly, yes. I'll I'll compulsively be going through Facebook Marketplace. You should go, oh, a disco. We should get another one, except no more cars. Yeah. <laughs> and honestly. She's not wrong. <laughs> I, I, occasionally, Rika, the big dog, will look over my shoulder and be like, oh, I miss that truck. Yeah, no. <laughs> Um, back to the racing WRLs at Heartland Park for an eight and an eight. Now they've only got 23 cars and rather than our standard fare of how this all breaks down, let's play a game. There are no Hondas. Anyone want to guess out of those 23 cars, how many of them are not BMWs, Miatas or Porsches? How, how many total 23. again? 23, 23, 10, three, Chrissy, seven, Two. Oh, I win. <laughs> a Subaru and an 84 Celica. So you go, 84 Celica. You go hard. Good Everyone on Everyone else oh, gets that. a sad trombone. Oh, the my whole gosh, race and a half. Gets a sad trombone. Wow. <laughs> oh, God, that's right. Hey, can you pack yep. that? Yes. Actually, yeah, because Eric will be there. Yes. Oh, of course. <laughs> oh, man. I'm so right? sad I'm going to miss. Oh. What? Okay. Uh, and Lemons is at NJMP, 127 cars. Whoever's starting, <laughs> it's not, I don't know if it's me. I don't know that I want to start. Um, uh, I, I nominate Eric and Jim. I think. Yeah. <laughs> no, what, Jeff wants to start? I'll start. Okay. Okay. Anyway, so. uh, 20, we didn't even, this is usually a Friday night conversation. Anyway, uh, 23 BMWs. Boring. Boring. Seven. <laughs> Jeff's mouth is full. Seven Miatas, <laughs> ten Hondas, four Porsches, and more good stuff than we can list. Uh, we will talk about that in a little while. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, All right. Sorry. So Jeff's mouth I is full. Scroll Let's down move a lot. on recent, to recent results. Recent results. Sorry, he doesn't. Right, have to I was yet. scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Scroll. Oh, it's my turn. Got it. Sorry. Uh, that's okay. Lemons ran at High Plains, Colorado. A and overall was flat face face in a Miata. B was Salty Thunder and their um, unacceptably reliable Fiero. I don't know how. They Is that it? I didn't realize it. that existed. Yeah. Is it oh, actually yeah. a. That's the second time they've won. They, uh, at the 24, wow. they ran one of them in the short race and won that too. That, and he, that guy is so into the Fieros and he's, he's also really hardcore about having the two car team. Like when he runs in, like he, when he runs out here with two cars, he makes two separate trips towing these Fieros out. Mm-hmm. He's the one with the Salt. Fiero back tattoo, right? No, that's a different guy. Oh, that's a different guy. No. This guy's but, much uh, The Fiero yeah. back tattoo guy was kind of a jerk. This guy's super nice. We met yeah, him and he, uh, he's, he's got good drivers. Chris Champion, yeah. I think, was on one of them. Yeah, yeah I mean, he, he knows how to pick people that know how to take care of a car. Like, that's unbelievable. Uh, Class A was Gutless Cutlass and an 87 Cutlass Supreme. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. That's Sexy. great. Uh, Org Choice was Hangar 13 Racing in a Vega. Excellent. Judge's choice went to Gun Barrel Cobras and their Toyota Starlet. And they took I Got Screwed. And from what I, th- that guy has a built thread on GRM for him. That has a Suzuki 2.7 liter V6. Hmm. And this weird distributor that's built, it's a Jeep distributor on a bracket that has a belt drive off the cam Whoa. of the Suzuki <laughs> motor to make it work. It's, uh. Then it has like a carb with a manifold they made. I mean, the this whole is, thing is this is shocking. Oh, and, and of anyone... course that's of course that's going to be Judge's choice because it was Phil's race. Yeah, I can't believe anybody has a starlet. Starlets are like extremely popular in High the desert. import racing crowd. Mm-hmm. Like desert. drag racers, they yeah, love drag them. racers. Man, they put wankles in them and they freaking yeah, yeah. put them in the seven seconds. So yeah, all this stuff that doesn't rust out there. Um, regional award when it was roll cage testing contents first place went to deferred maintenance in their Chevy love that they rethemed for this race. Again, something we haven't seen in years here. Uh, Road Mangler Cup limited to those who run Yokohama tires was the 2010 Hyundai Genesis of the racing baguettes. Finally, IOE was Caddy Daddy and an 81 rabbit pickup. That's amazing. Also Uh, things you don't see in the Northeast anymore. No, no. Hyundai Genesis, if you got a good one, that could make a pretty good race car. They got a lot of power in there. Uh, AER ran two races at Summit Point. Race one had the first four positions all on the lead lap. But first was Ruben Performance Garage, that's spelled like the sandwich. 
because they're a barbecue uh, shop too. That's oh, the, there you go. Yeah. Uh, 37 seconds over ITS Racing, who I believe helped me get my computer working the other day. I called ITS and I said, but never mind. Uh, about 40 seconds behind them was Man Cave Motorsports. Race two was not close, not as close. RTI Racing was a lap ahead of Ruben Performance and Man Cave Motorsports was three laps from the lead. WRL was at Daytona after 14 hours on the banking screaming goat raced uh, racing edge out automatic racing by mere 3.7 seconds to take the win. I'm sure that was very exciting. And the third place car was TLM USA two laps beyond. Lucky dog up at Pacific raceways Saturday, six hour race, very close entire podium on the same lap. Rocket bunny took the overall by 40 seconds over team B and just nine seconds behind that was finally racing Sunday, even closer team B eked out the overall 1.8 seconds in front of finally racing third, three thieves, 30 seconds back the 84 Monte Carlo 84 Monte Carlo of the intimidators finished 24th on Saturday and 31st on Sunday. That's a good name for that. I hope it's black. Listener feedback Or time. yellow and blue, you know, for the Wrangler I guess, era. yeah. Go yeah. Blue, blue and yellow, sure. Uh, Randy B. Bisher is commenting on my thoughts of the luxury mammal getting out of his tiny little fist. He said, I bought my Fiesta partially for the reactions of the bystanders when a car gives birth to me. It has been totally worth it. Uh, he also said he's had a passenger tires two feet in the air at an autocross he knows it will never flip in the other direction. <laughs> That's why I don't want to buy a Fiesta ST. Be a good circle track car for Randy there. Go always turn him left. Yep. <laughs> uh, Chrissy posted a picture of our new to us Doug Nash 4 plus 3 84 Crossfire Injection Corvette and got a lot of positive responses. So if you haven't seen it, it's very dirty and it smells very bad. Head to the Facebooks or Instagram and it's it is better and worse than we expected. We'll I was hoping you would days. pick one of those. I didn't know which way to go. No, it's, it's, both. Was, it's, bo- it's, it's both. both. Can you clear up the Doug Nash controversy? This is a, a this is a four speed regular is, stick yeah, with some sort of is. overdrive thing. This is the only manual transmission you could get in the 84 Corvette, and it was only in about 20% of them. It is a four speed manual transmission that is, that is basically an old school T10, like a Muncie T10, right? It is notchy as all get out. It is a terrible shift. It is only four gears, right? And they said, well, four isn't enough. But GM didn't have really a five-speed that was going to hold up to this kind of power. So they stuck with a four-speed, but knew that that wasn't enough gears. So essentially, they stuck a power glide automatic on the back side of the T10 with a little switch. Power power glide, two-speed. Exactly. With a little switch. And that's it. You You can engage overdrive in second third or fourth gears and there's some Ooh. kind of you know it'll if you also the floor when overdrive is down it'll automatically downshift the overdrive but leave the manual in the gear i remember from driving around in high school with paul we're like this is dumb and we're in high school <laughs> <laughs> uh okay and this is obviously your friend paul we all know paul uh we've seen him at the track uh um everybody doesn't know is this okay. bet well, i mean i was on the podcast um, is this better or worse than the skip shift? Yes. Ooh, good question. Uh, no, I've driven both. I'm going to say this is worse because the skip shift, you just plug a little $20 thing in and the skip shift goes away. Because you can get rid of the skip shift. Yes. Got this it. is this is just a, a 1984 GM like workaround. Mm-hmm. Like we know exactly we the same thing we were talking about enough. before the show. Is, yeah, is yeah. stupid GM being stupid GM. Well, yeah. and I actually, I knew a lot of uh, British cars that had the kind of like the overdrive second. My MGB stations. had one. Yeah, it was, yeah. It had I was going to say a TR6 click, I know of. Yeah. Click the turn signal away from you, and that was overdrive. But the yeah. turn signal is also the horn. If you push that in, it was the horn. It was <laughs> That's too much stuff for one stick. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's not good, but it's better than if it was just a T10 four-speed. So who knows? What's better the than an automatic. Drive? Yeah, absolutely. Once the car drives, I'll tell you what it's like. 
All right. Margin. But I mean, has but some it's, cleaning and. But it's 1984. Like this is 1984 GM. This is not good. It is the best GM could do at the time. And apparently, if you read the old reviews of the 84 Corvette, it was apparently oh, quite impressive. It was it was for it its was for its time period. Absolutely. Right. It was yeah, game changing. Oh, yeah. It 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 propelled the Corvette to the world class level of sp- yeah. sports cars. But 1984 uh, was yeah. a bad time for cars. Yeah. In it's <laughs> malaise era. It's like right. the worst time. This for is this is the Kaland. This is the you don't sweat much for a fat guy compliment of the 84 Corvette was really great for 84. Because 84 was the first year that the the Mustang GT went to or had an optional fuel injection and made 200 horsepower. And oh, my God, the streets will be covered in blood. 200 horsepower. You know what else makes 200 horsepower at the wheels? (laughs) Our Civic. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I yes. suck at racing. I racing. I have no idea. I was so I I, every I had single the, day. Yeah, I had the notes, and somehow they've gotten misplaced on here. Um, so the it was no pedal, no wheel. Uh, they had about eight competitors, and I forget who won. But what notable was Lady Abernon made it to the podium. She finished third. It was awesome. So oh. we decided she was the winner, and then she joined <laughs> us in the booth. Me and Hamsa in the booth. The rest of it, and uh, I know we twice declared Tyler the winner because it was his birthday. Uh, but uh, we went to Fair. Irwindale for a uh, a gladiator, uh, no damage oval track, and then again for the figure eight without a jump, because you can't have the jump and damage turned off, or or mm-hmm. rather you can't, yeah, because they wanted damage, and then we wrapped the whole thing up with Barber in uh, rally cars uh, on the uh, short course at Barber, but uh, genuinely just a good time. Forgotten how much fun all those people are, how much fun it is. Uh, Hamsa joined us in the booth, and we just we did our normal thing. We talked way too much about seventies TV shows and mustaches and uh, a lot of other weird things. Uh, this coming week, it's the enduro at Lime Rock. You should join us. You got nothing else going on because TV's all repeats and it's too hot to be outside. Unless you're driving home from the track. That's which, unless you're driving home from the track. In which case, put it on YouTube, on your phone, and then just plug it into your car. Stereo I'll, I'll be listen. home in time. I wonder if I get a hall pass. Like, hi, I've been racing all weekend. Can I go to Lemons broadcast? I don't know. That's going to fly. <laughs> it's like, let's push your luck after I just got your tires out of hawk for you. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, she, Back. Uh, she probably had a little bit of fun with it. I yep. mean, she's fired up. She but... was on, She was on the chip. Yeah, she was yeah. definitely out for blood. That's all good. All right. E1, our race. In, in prep for the Lemons race, we uh, had mental set up this week's race at Lime Rock. It wasn't smart. Why did it not go well? You just set it up at different times, but is it? Like was anything well, else? Well, tell it? us what happened, mental. Let's yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, I, I I left the default, which is twenty practice, twenty minutes qualifying, twenty minute oh, race. Oh, oh. Uh, and my microphone is not working on my Oculus, but my headphones are. So people welcome are talking to our to world. Me. Hello. Right. So people were talking to me. So while they were doing that, I popped out of the first race and went and changed the second race very, very quickly so I could make it back in. And I changed it to 15 minutes of practice, five minutes of qualifying, 40 minute race. And that went over like a lead balloon. Uh, so the first one started at <laughs> the first race started at five 30. The track was very cold. Uh, actually I loved it. I was driving the, uh, the Cayman. Uh, we were using the skippies the Miatas, the McLarens, all that kind of stuff. Actually, um, now I'm taking Chrissy stuff. So uh, oh, no, I'd rather hear from you. You were there. Let's do yeah, it. So for a while, I was actually doing pretty good. Uh, of course, Santiago didn't show up until the second race. So that explains a lot of it. Uh, it was, I don't know. I, I'm good at taking bad cars at bad tracks. I'm usually, that's where I'm competent. But you get somebody that knows what they're doing with a good car and I'm a dead man. Uh, and then, so the second one, I started immediately after that. So it was right at sunset. Uh, and I, when I added the 87s, then I forgot they don't have headlights and poor lady a chose the 87 with no yeah, headlights. We did that so, she, once. <laughs> so she's trying to follow radicals who had the flashing lights. Uh, I did actually, I wanted to try it. So we, we took the Corvette C7 GTR, which shifts like the Cadillac. It is, unless you're off the brakes and blip the throttle, it doesn't want to move up a gear. Uh, but it's also wicked fast and handles pretty well great so So for those who haven't been there normally it's a 40 minute practice 
no qualifying or five minute qualifying and 20 minutes race. Okay. Now that's different than what uncle Dave told me, but I'm going to take your advice on that because Santiago went, Oh, this is great. I'm going to go make dinner. And he came back, uh, 10 minutes into the race going, what the hell, man? <laughs> and, and, he and, and he was, he was five laps down when he got into the simulator and he finished fourth. <laughs> I am not surprised. No, at all. no, no, no. <laughs> No, I think Uncle so. Dave said something like, I was winning. And I looked down, I was like, holy shit, is this race over? No, it's still got <laughs> halfway to go. All right. So 45-20. I'm going to remember that for a Just 20-minute race, n- as little qualifying as possible. That's yeah. It. It, was, uh, it was nice, though. The, uh, anyway. Yeah, exactly. The second race, of course, Tom Tom showed up. And uh, and literally, everyone was like, oh, I forgot how much I like hearing you and Dave go back and forth. <laughs> Oh, good. Uh, join us any Monday for the E1R race. If you're listening, uh, if you do iRacing, just jump on in. It's a hosted race. Look for E1R. It does have a password. Contact us for the password and the Discord link, uh, but it's our brake pads. So, you know, ST43, you know. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Focus, yeah. Bubba Wallace, you figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yep. May- oh, wait. And uh, you know who never has to contact us for the Discord link? She doesn't care. True. Well, she also <laughs> knows because we say it and she listens to the show. So there's that. Thanks, uh, thanks for the cookies. I, they're not here yet because it's coming this weekend, but I'm sure I'll eat plenty. Yep. And, and by the way, if, if uh, for, for the listeners that'll be in New Jersey and they go by and they say hi to the, to the rest of the Three Puddle Mafia, I won't be there. If you see a box that says Chrissy only, don't touch those. Those aren't yours. They don't come right. outside. Yeah, they kidding? live in the. They live in right. the RV. There, there's exactly there are, there are. there are plenty of cookies for you. Just don't take Chrissy's. <laughs> oh, they don't leave the. They don't leave the RV. They that might leave in my mouth or my hand, but they don't hey, leave it. Taking Chrissy's cookies means you get no cookies for the future. They go. They don't go to Gen Pop. They no. Go. No, no. Uh, like I'm that. told there. Uh, I'm told there's a, there's going to be, there's a lot of people planning on doing some great stuff. They are relaxing because everyone's been behaving themselves. They are relaxing a lot of the social stuff. So it is going to be a truly great event. And I'm genuinely bummed. I won't be there. Well, we let's to get have- to it. Cause it's our main topic. New Jersey motorsports preview. Chris, you oh, have something. that's so nice. I said, we were going to try to have Eric's band come. They were all ready to come <sighs> for this, yeah. but that yeah. we're just a little too soon still, but. Oh, well. But we're we're right there. Yeah, if everyone we're getting there. We're getting there. Everyone, you know, racers are good people anyway. So if everyone in the racing community just behaves, we'll be fine. Get yeah, your damn shots, awesome. people. Yeah. All right. Uh, so as mentioned, not going to be there. But as I was typing this up, I don't know if you guys realize this. This is really exciting. You guys are debuting or, or for the first time at New Jersey. It's not the first time the cars have been on track, but you guys are bringing two new cars to New Jersey. And I can't remember the last time that happened. We've never I, had I, two new cars. We've always exactly, had one. Yeah. yeah. We've had one, you know, or one with a radical change or a radical evolution. But you guys are, you know, full tilt bringing two and well, we brought it wasn't, new. It wasn't by choice. Let's make new that formulas. Clear. You're yeah. bringing a yeah. new formula, two new formulas of race car to New yeah, Jersey. We brought them both to Pittsburgh, but we only had one registered, so we weren't were actually banking on both of them running at the well, same and, time. And, and Good you, thing. You alibi, yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, but you alibi like early on that this was just going to be a shakedown run to identify some issues, but this time, nah, man. We're, we're going to try and make them both run. You you we're, lick the stamp and put it on the envelope because it's time to send it. Well, we're going to call it a shakedown runs, but it's Even still going to, it's still going to teething issues, right? Teething issues. We hope. All we right. Expect so, totally. so uh, Jeff, let's talk about the Z. Yeah. Let's, let's just do a quick review for a quick review. 1992, 300 Z X. That is the Z 32 version. The swoopy one with the funky headlights. Uh, it is black. It looks like a Corvette. Cause we got some Corvette stickers oh, on it. It says way. Corvette magazine and got jorts. And we're doing like a Corvette jort new balance kind of theme going on and um it has an ls swap a 4.8 out of a i'm looking look chris 2006 silverado 2003 silverado i was close the gen 3 v8 gen 3 thank you and uh chris did 90 percent of the hard work to get it in the car i did 90 percent of the easy work too so he actually it's did like true 80 percent of the work but pretty yeah. much um uh, i i i have been uh, uh catching up lately trying to figure everything else out and we had don't talk about issues now or we're just going to talk about the review of it 
we we we've got a part where we'll talk about the pit race. So okay, yeah. So that's what it is. It's uh, fast. We hope. And it's basically it, stock. It's got some good suspension on it. Um, but yeah, there it is. Cool, cool. How about the three? Chrissy. Chrissy. Um, what the review of it? Just, just, what just, is just, it? Like, like you know, oh. if, if someone's listening to the show for the first time, they don't know what the three Four. is. It is a fabulous white, uh, pearlescent white 2007 Mazda 3 hatch. It looks uh, pretty new. It looks Longer pretty for awesome, right? Um, it the outside looks fantastic. The inside is all white as well, and so that looks fantastic as well. Um, it is a five-speed, a six-speed, excuse me, um, with a whole lot of goodies underneath. We've replaced ever. I've uh, owned it since two thousand, brand new, and which is why it looks new still. True. Uh, it had two hundred fifty thousand miles on the chassis, uh, but there's plenty of other parts that are new. So as they need to be replaced, we upgraded them. So the suspension is uh, not new, uh, but it is upgraded. Yeah. So it'll be a pretty. It, it's uh, so we drove it at uh, Pittsburgh and it was fantastic. Uh, I got in and we, I like all of us got in. Couldn't believe how awesome it was. It was just better than we expected to be on the racetrack kept up with traffic i thought it was kind of gonna sit with and be behind a lot of the faster cars but we kept up so uh chris i think did some hot laps on it and and did some you know good ringer laps so hopefully we will be able to push it a little bit closer to its limits the whole i was gonna say can you mention the motor since that's kind of important it is a 2.5 from a fusion ford fusion ford Mm -hmm. fusion and uh yeah it's pretty awesome for those of you who don't know, that's the same Mazda engine family. So it's basically it's MZ, a Mazda. MZR. Yeah. MZR, yeah. yep. Needed a little bit of, uh, just got a little bit extra cubic inches. Yep. Mm-hmm. Pretty great. Does it still have plates on it? Oh, yeah. Yes. It's insured. Oh, yeah. Plates, lights. Yeah, we, awesome. we, even, we drove it's it. Cool. We take it to the gas station and fill it up and then fill all the cans up. Just, <laughs> it's easier that way. Yeah. In preparation for this race after pit, we um, replaced all the wheel bearings, got a new set of front loaded knuckles ready to go, put ARP studs all around, uh, and replaced one control arm because one of the ball joint boots was torn. But the control arms are like 50 bucks for this thing with the ball joint and bushing. So it's it, okay. I'm just doing that. <clears throat> uh, got a spares package together and got it set for cool shirts. And uh, put race tires on it also, yeah. correct? And yeah, a little oh. we went from we went from oh. 17 by or we went from 18 by eights to 17 by eight and a halfs and a two, 235, 45, 17 Hankook RS4 under. They it. look oh, that's a lot of tire. Pretty awesome. They're yeah, they're just they're big. Yeah. I'm excited. Uh oh. who else from the three pedal mafia is gonna be there? Betty. Betty's going to be there with uh, Greg, Bruce, Darren, and we think Drew. So they're, they're they've been pushing lately. They, coming off of their yeah. coming off of their fourth and a half place finish last time, uh, and I think they're they're going to be pushing this time. So that's great. They better. Yeah. Dr- Drew they, is they, a wheelman. I was pretty. Yeah. Drew's a wheelman, and, and Darren. Just Darren. Darren, yeah. absolutely. Darren is. We and know Darren Darren's a seems that Darren always seems to have a an effect on the. Betty crew of kind of making them a little more serious than you know uh at least get out in the morning and do stuff because greg is not getting up in the morning (laughs) to do stuff um and unfortunately the crescent is not going to make it dave had some family issues going on that precluded him from being able to bring that that car but dave is going to at least stop by for a day and a night and and hang out and aaron's going to be there all weekend it's coming if, if you have a plus size racing seat and are looking for a driver come find aaron and you could do a lot worse than Aaron. Aaron, Aaron will Aaron drive. Aaron can drive. Yep. yep. And and he will bring your car back probably in better shape than he took it out. And probably he fixes things sp- while he's driving it. He yeah, just exactly. a little wrench. Turns he's, it. <laughs> he's so consistent, and he is so yep. for a big, powerful guy. He's very delicate on machinery. 
<clears throat> luxury yep. mammal. Um, not as luxury as he used to be, but luxury mammal all the same. He's strong as hell too, though. Don't don't underestimate him. Yeah, mm-hmm. he he doesn't have a desk job like the rest of us. Uh, so who else is going to be there? Uh, we garage There's heroes. One hundred twenty-seven cars. One hundred. Yeah, it's a lot every, of damn. Everyone. Every, pretty much there. everyone's good. Everyone's probably there. everyone listening to me right now is probably going to be there. <laughs> um, the garage heroes in training. Absolutely. Amanda, Momrath, people. Uh, the garage um, heroes, I believe, are bringing a bunch of people. They're bringing, yeah. But yeah. Amanda is bringing not only the BMW, but a 1937 Buick. Oh, is it done? I didn't oh, know I thought you were just yeah. be telling people that what it is. It's, on, oh, it's on the it's on the registration list. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Which so, is which is on the forums, which is where yeah. I grabbed it. So this yeah, is yeah. this is public because it's on it's it's publicly posted. The 37 Buick. But that's that's her uh, secret project she's been working on with Bruce and Dr. Florida Man Donnie and the whole crew. Yeah, I was and, surprised. Uh, Alex has been wrenching on that thing. A lot of people are going to be there. So yeah, I think Alex is very quickly becoming a permanent member of Momrath. Not good for them. They, yeah. He's a good yeah, wheelman. He, he is, and, and uh, he's he's helpful. Nice guy. Super yeah, nice guy. Absolutely. Uh, Dan of the Libertarians. I'm so upset. I'm going to miss Dan of the Libertarians. Yeah. Uh, Cheese Bolt will be there because it's Jersey. Everybody mm-hmm. get ready to clutch your pearls. <laughs> if you're driving, put both hands on the wheel because this may shock you. Tom Lamino's rabbit GTI golf, whatever the hell it is, is running and is supposedly going to show up. Yep. It's It'll on the trailer. He he posted a picture of it on oh, the yeah. trailer. Yeah, it's coming. Uh, oh, over no, under, over under on will it make it to lunch on Saturday? I think it will. Once it runs, as long as they don't do anything yeah. bad. Lunch, yes. Dinner, that's the question. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, he, he made that uh, fox run. He should be able to make this golf run. Uh, so anyway, the glue sticks will be there with their awful jag. Uh, they, which, we almost traded that for a seat or something. You, we tried to sell them the ombre. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of odd. My father knows somebody on the glue sticks. And we did not know this until recently. He was like, oh, yeah, my friend, he's told me he's going to be running the lemons race. And I, we were like, oh, who's he running with? And like, I don't know. His car looks like a glue stick and it's a Jaguar. We're like, oh, my God, we know them. Yeah. It's a it's a good team. It's just a terrible car. Yeah. I like their Firebird, whatever that was. They Camaro that. Bird. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I may have some guests. I have offered a couple really? of people, including some friends from work and a few other people to stop by, uh, including the intern might make it. The 14 year old, I want to learn how to race. And he emails me questions like, Hey, Jeff, um, when do you think I should start looking for sponsors? I was like, I don't know. Drive first. <laughs> now, now, yeah. no, <laughs> get a sponsor now. If you find yeah. somebody, I should. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Uh, so it is, it is going to be an epic New Jersey event on the scale that New Jersey is always a truly wonderful time, despite being in New Jersey. Uh, as Homs has said on the uh, uh, iRacing broadcast, bring some red tape for the tops of your gas cans. But let's uh, talk about Pitt, because you brought both the cars to Pitt, but it wasn't a hard push because y- you guys had the Z, but you knew the three was there. So you had a bit of a safety net, but this time, no, uh, no backup plan. You're running both cars, right? Yep. Yeah. That is I mean, the backup. That plan. is the backup plan. Yeah. But we have more than. We only have six drivers, so, yeah, six, so. we'll all get time <laughs> if, if one of them. So, so go. it's the sorry for party business model. Bring twelve cars, have six drivers, lots to eat. Eh, grab a car, just go race. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, right. I wouldn't Already. say that we're pushing for any kind of wins and stuff. This is still shakedown. Um, yeah. I think this is my opinion. I think the Mazda is probably closer than the Nissan to having all the teething things worked out um, yeah, because we I got agree. probably equal time in both, but the Mazda was a freaking Timex. It ran the entire time well, while the Nissan was braking the entire time. When so. you start with a car that was driving around everywhere, getting groceries, going to the airport, doing everything perfectly well. Being and then, loved. And then don't touch any of that. <laughs> amazing how that works it's Stop like adding power someone, to your car yeah someone once said that motor swaps are hard i think there's like they did like a podcast about it a couple, yeah. couple shows of couple it shows about yeah, it yeah. yeah yeah so uh let me discuss the brake problems because i mentioned that um we sent eric uh k914 lover out in the beginning of the race and he reported almost immediately a brake shutter and the shutter got worse and the shutter got worse and it was not a lot of laps 
before it started, our theory was that we got a bad, um, a bad break in, a bad um, bedding of the pads. So we got a new set of discs. We swapped the discs. And then immediately that started shuddering too. So this has been part of the sh- the things that I've been searching for, for my wrenching between the races. Um, I We had a leak in the power booster. Um, so that was replaced. I don't think a leaking power booster, booster would cause that. Um, but maybe, maybe it was doing something and activating the ABS because it does have ABS. I don't, I don't know exactly what was happening. Um, like I said, I mentioned that we replaced all of the hardware and I checked to make sure all of the braking system was tight and doing what it should. So hopefully we fix the brake problems. I also cut new rotors, by the way, where do you find someone to cut rotors these days? I had to find like a 60 year old dude in a machine shop. who's was like, it's the, literally in the back of a deli, like an Italian deli. <laughs> you had to drive around no. the deli and go Seriously? in the back door. Well, and so was, like, you got a sandwich guy. while you were there or what? what, what you, you got a grinder. Have. You got a grinder while no, you were there. Hoagie. There's no grinders Hoagie. here. All right. yeah. It's Philly. Um, but anyway, yeah, literally in the same building as a deli in the back, you literally had to drive behind park next to the dumpster and there's like a greasy door that's open and a 60 year old guy sitting on a stool waiting for you to show up to machine stuff. So Heads you know it was done right. Yeah, totally. Sure. So anyway, yeah. So, so that is not all together because we are still waiting for the FedEx guy to show up with the new ARP studs <laughs> for the fourth corner. So um, power steering, I'll mention the power steering. Uh, it was puking power steering fluid because we had a bad... Uh, an line that we built and a bad banjo bolt that jeff over tightened that was aluminum that snapped and they were one-time use because when you torqued them the second time they just broke uh that has been replaced with steel banjo bolts uh it's good to Thank know goodness just the one i the, the other one didn't leak so although i have a steel bolt for that Excellent. that actually entire banjo is the same banjo as um some sort of popular turbo I think it was like a T25 turbo. So I, that was easy to find. The other one is a size that exists nowhere except in the Nissan power steering rack. So, Of course. Yeah. I did buy the sense. bolt, but I didn't, since it didn't leak, I didn't unbolt it. Yeah, totally. Le- leave it alone. It's fine. Exactly right. <laughs> Don't touch it. Uh, I also moved the cooler. I mentioned that last time. Uh, we were getting some puking of power steering fluid. We put in a reducer, blah, 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 blah. I think that's fine. I am very confident that I have fixed the power steering. Do we have any extra fluid? Oh, gallons of it. Tons. Good. Good. <sighs> Excellent. Fantastic. Okay. What else we need to know? What's next? All right. So uh, let's see. So we went through that. And then the three, it just, it just worked really, really well. Awesome. Uh, So we talked about that. Now we talked about the power steering thing, Uh, you know, and then somebody called us a wuss for not running it without power steering. And in this particular instance, and in several instances, not having power steering really is kind of a safety issue. Anybody want to touch on that? Uh, Because it was puking fluid all over the ground really is why we pulled it in. Um, And also you're running some fairly massive meats up front and there's a giant 4.8 liter truck engine sitting on that axle. So it's not easy to wrestle that car around even at speed. Yeah, I mean, that was less of a concern than the fact that we were putting oil all over our tires and everybody else's tires. Uh, Power steering fluid is, is nasty stuff. It is. Yeah. So, okay. and by the way, it was puking out like fire hose puking. So, so like, like, like the track guy came to find, I say, do you know who has this Nissan here? It's like, yeah, that, that's ours. He's like, yeah, you guys are leaking some fluid. Cause as you look at the track that goes all the way from the upper garage, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This right, right wasn't so drip, drip, drip. Right yeah. was in the car. Oh, and, and I said, so oh yeah, fossil. yeah, we know. That's why yeah. that car is not on track and not going on track. It is going right in that trailer. We moved it last night. So sorry. He's like, okay, good. Just didn't want you to drive it anywhere. Like here, that. have a cookie. Thank you for coming by. Yeah. <laughs> uh, dealer's choice on what breaks next. I have a thought. Well, before okay. you, before we talked about what's what's going to break, what's going to work? What do you, what do you guys think is going to be oh. really awesome about that Z, particularly on the non dong course of New Jersey? Chris, I'll give it to you because you drove it more laps in anger than I did. 
I mean, if it's running, it's fast. It's fast, fast. It's so fast. It's and it's really balanced. like a little scary fast. Yeah. You have to figure out where the, how the pedal will give you all the fast. You can't, yeah, we, it's, it, it's not like yeah. Honda so, stand on the gas fast. It's yeah. so modulate the gas, all modulate the, the gas time. all the time. Absolutely. And it's an electric thro- electronic throttle that we built out of the Silverado pedal. So some people complain, not me. Some people complain that there was a very short throw between nothing and holy fuck. Hang on. Well, that comes from GM. So yeah, we left the same length of the pedal. We just changed the shape of it. I hope I'm not the complainer. I just have to get used to it. If it's I, I remember running the Honda after the swap at New Jersey. And at the end of the straightaway, it was one of those, wow, this is, um, this is alarming. This car is really, really quick. And is this, you think the Z is going to be like one of those, I am really going supercar speeds right now. Well, at Pitt, I was doing 120 coming like on the back straight without trying especially hard and also passing people enough that I took, I eased off the I took my foot <laughs> off the gas and I looked around really carefully. There's got to be a yellow sure. flag. I got to be. Right. <laughs> yeah. So. All right. It's, it goes. Yeah. All right. What the first thing it's going to break is uh, all our gas cans from putting so much gas. In <laughs> mm-hmm. Our credit cards are going to stop and question yeah. us because you're like, are, are you sure you want to be dumping this much gas in Jersey? What yeah. are you doing? Yeah. How much 93 can you possibly yep. use? All of so, it. So I think we should make some sort of bet, inner team bet. The Ooh. first person to Bend one of the cars owes somebody something. So the first person who makes contact with something in the three must buy Chrissy and we come up with something. Good idea. Right? Say, it's not going to be and, me. Like, <laughs> like, and then the first person who bends the Z has to buy something else for the team. I don't know. Just because we've never had like such pristine cars. The Z has some previous damage but the sheet metal is pretty darn straight. And we mentioned that the three is like perfect. So, so listeners, if you have an idea of what the first team member who bends Chrissy's car or bend Chris's Z should buy either the team or the person drop it uh, into the doodly do or get a hold of us on any of our social medias or text us four, eight, four, I Zero bet is Jim. Well, we know that, but not who, but what should they buy? <laughs> well, this I don't is know. A, this Matt, is a wonderful idea. Uh, uh, Mr. Matthew is going to be driving with us this weekend. Yeah, I still think and, and he gets a little Ooh, aggro. Like a bump. <laughs> it's not yeah. going to be me, probably. Because... But there's a little bit of pressure with these cars, so it's hard to yeah. say what might happen because there, there is no pressure with these cars yet. No, no, there's pressure to, to not mess to anything not screw them up. up. Not screw them up. Yeah. I know, I know. Whoever bends the Z first needs to refurbish the uh, marital aids uh, that uh, have all disappeared. Oh, that's a oh, fine I idea like because that. they're very you expensive. Like more. You need yeah. more. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my. if you bend the Z, you need to buy a new accommodator and a double-edged dog. They don't. Also, you just need to fix it. If you bend it, you fix it your damn self properly so I don't have to. How about that? Uh, That's what uh, I want. Also, marital aids are very expensive. So we Appa- have not During reported. the pandemic, apparently they were in use. <laughs> I don't know. You can't, you can't buy it. Like video game chips. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, and then, Chrissy, what do you want if someone bends oh, the I, I don't know. Like, normally, I'd be like steak dinner, but that's not your style. Or no. like a bottle of booze. But Ooh, I know. They need to buy Chrissy a um because you don't panel. A new panel. The damn like, car. Oh, no, the fix it, fix it is fix yeah. it is the baseline. While, while Chrissy sits there with a claw and yells at you, maybe you have to fix it. that might be but, okay. Uh, a a uh, subscription to the Peloton workout services. Uh, I don't. Then do she Peloton. needs a Peloton. She doesn't have a Peloton. You no. don't need a Peloton bicycle because they do a stack of different stuff. Oh, they have I yoga. Like my, I like my They've stuff. Got, like, I like right. my I like we'll my, like my community. We'll find find All okay. right, I'll All think right. of it. It's a good right. idea though. I like it. Okay, so Chrissy, uh starting with you and then rotating around, what do you guys think is gonna work really well in the three for this race? I think 
Everything? Mm-hmm. How so. long can it go on a tank? We don't know. No. Maybe up to two hours, we think, maybe. Well, we'll, we'll be able know. to do a better. Uh, Chris fixed the venting. No, it still has a vent in it. He fixed the restrictor I on. The, I pulled the restrictor out of the gas filler. Because it took, oh, I don't Forever. know. 10 minutes no it wasn't 10 minutes but it was so long to fuel it uh so we fixed that that'll be helpful but of interest though there is no vent on the filler pipe on that car i've traced the filler pipe all the way down there is no vent so the vent comes out of the tank somewhere else so i'm optimistic that car will take fuel okay realistically we'll find out yeah no i think it'll be fine i mean it's been like the the gm cars that you had that block where we block the vent and then it spits back and eh. It's been anyway. just a solid car that I, I think, I mean, it hasn't Everything any problem. Right. I don't drive it fully in anger, but it's been a lot of time in traffic. So I don't know. I think the next yeah. thing that's going to break on that car is the fuel pump because it's original to the car. And we're going to be running it without a lot of gas. you didn't say the trans, it's fine. No, because I have a spare trans sitting well, in the shed. Shit. We've had long time conversations about this. That That's yeah. not going to be. Is, it a, is that an intake pump? Yeah, it is. Yeah, because okay. if it was an external pump, we would have changed it compelling yeah. all right yeah. so yeah. obviously jeff you uh you just talked about the brakes if you want to elaborate on that but let's talk about challenges that you guys are expecting with the cars uh yeah we it's dealer's choice we don't know what's going to break on the z yet because we haven't really punished it yet mm-hmm. there's too many too many but, variables yeah we'll make it work yeah something with the brakes though or the steering that's what i'm guessing steering's a good thought yeah yeah and, yeah and Chris, and you just talked about the potential of the fuel pump. Yeah. Aside from that, the car's the car's solid. Top notch. All right. Yeah. It's a street uh, car. Cool. So let's do uh because I, I I did post this on the Facebook, so we got one new subscriber who said they were going to subscribe to us and they were on the toilet when they made this uh, subscription. They're subscribing to us just to listen to this track walk. So right now there well, is we several got stuff super before the track walk. Oh, we do unless you, unless you if you have yeah, let's just go we right update the, the notes. Walk. Really? Yeah. No, 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 all right. no, no. I will say it, it, that's where I was going to go with what Chris was saying. So let's talk about, you know, you're at New Jersey. There's stuff you need, or did oh. I miss? What did no, I that's cool. Chris? We we're stuck going right into the track walk. So yeah, we're sure. talking about the locally uh, yeah. available services, et cetera. Uh, you can't pump your own gas in Jersey and you can't bring a 2020 helmet. First off, or 2015 helmet. If you go with a lot of uh, jugs on a trailer to the uh, uh, the Riggins, the Riggins, they will let you do it because they don't want to mess with it. They would rather sit on yeah. the chair before it, so they'll let you do it. But yeah, actually, that, most of the time in cans, they'll let you do it. But they you, let actually they let us do in your um in your fifty five gallon drum as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, on the subject of dude, don't do that shit. Okay, look, when you get nagged for your twenty ten helmet. Don't don't go on one of those rants about blah, blah, blah. you said it was good. It's not lemons. So you, just you've gotten up. 87 emails at this point, or someone yeah. in your team has gotten 87 emails. They yeah, do it's New everywhere. Jersey it is fucking everywhere. Has yeah. laws um, about racetracks that supersede everything. Uh, we've heard of stories of state police pulling people over in the paddock. Uh, there's a lot of crazy things out there. Uh, the belts expire earlier than they do everywhere else because of New Jersey state laws. We've talked SFI. about this another, yeah, two we've years talked about in SFI. This, yeah, we've talked about this in other podcasts, so we don't need to go over that. But Jersey's yeah. a good course with a lot of amenities. The showers it is, are it nice, is. but do, don't don't yell at the staff. Don't yell at the staff. Don't. Yeah, it's not. It's, that, not, am, it's not their rules. I am risking it by bringing my 2010 helmet that there You're won't be state this. police. Because they're not who the state police are not listening to this. They're the only ones who are going to care. Lemons is say, yeah, you're fine with us, but if the state police stop you, hey, they're going to give you a problem. And if the state police are listening, he's driving the lucky or the uh, laughing clown Thunderbird, and right. uh, you won't do anything about it. So, you know. Hey, if I figure worst case scenario, I'll borrow somebody's helmet or I'll there you go, go buy a new one. Whatever. I have a small right. head. You're not going to fit in mine. Yeah, there's enough He's people. A Simpson. In our team. He has a Simpsons yeah. head. I know there's people in our team whose helmets are the right size. Yeah. So that's my <laughs> worst case scenario. Uh, Bill Fisher already did a uh, a local review of the slushy machines in his podcast. So if you want to hear about that, go to Garage Heroes and Training, where he talks about which Wawa's and which 7 Elevens have good slushies. <laughs> I don't know why that's part of the podcast. It's it's a thing. Uh, we love Bill. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, but in general, yeah, we, we usually go to the Riggins gas station outside of the track. That usually one works out well and they don't hassle us much, but there's a Wawa a little further away. Um, Donnie nice. will be at that one because Donnie loves Wawa. Mm-hmm. There's no sheets there. Sorry, Donnie. No sheets. All right, uh, track walk time. Is someone going right? to share it? Who's going to share it? Yeah, yes. Mitchell said so, he's got a setup okay. here for us. So, okay. All right. So, uh, as, as we talked about, this is the non dong course or the non Toyota water pump course. And uh, there we have it. So, oh, that's nice. there is. Uh, I'll mention and, uh, to the yeah. people listening at home that if you want to follow along with the track map, we have it up. And we, so go watch on YouTube. We're on YouTube. There, there, yeah, there, you can watch us on YouTube, or if you're if you're not a YouTuber, uh, and you still want to follow along, there this map came directly from Ross Bentley Speed Secrets, so oh, we excellent. can we can walk around that. All right, right. we're seeing no. your desktop again. Yeah, yeah. this yeah. is a terrible. Oh crap! I'm sorry. Yeah, it. it, it, it I'm sorry. I forgot. Your, your Apple computer. Un- I know. There you my, go. My big screen. All right. All right, and now it's okay. It's a little off center, but all right, I'm then. working on it. I'm sorry. Uh, dang it. Okay. Right. Friggin uh, now, now you mentioned something about a video earlier. Do you have a video? I do. A video? I have a video up right now of a Porsche GT3. So I figured we'd start oh, with the map and then we can, uh, we can just pause the, uh, the, the, the video as it goes. So there's that guy. So this is all right. And I'm going to push play till we come into turn one. Oh, yeah, uh, so this is coming about. out of the yeah. I'm gonna turn so one. this right, is the so straightaway. So here hopefully, we go. Hopefully we get that finish. again. Yeah. Yeah, it's a straightaway. Yay. Right. Yay. <laughs> Look at this. He's going 150 miles an hour. Good for him. Um, uh, I feel like uh, I feel like the zoo is gonna match that. Yeah. No way. I don't All know right. that. Turn one is fairly simple. It is a you know what 80 degree right hand corner. Yep. It has a big curb on the inside. So watch out for that big ass curb because when people try to go and dive bomb on the inside, they can jump over that and then lose all traction. Um, it has more traction on the inside than on the outside. Just there's a little bit of fake camber to it. Um, then it falls off as it goes toward the outside. So it looks deceptively slow. Um, also watch out for this is this is where the blend line is, is on the inside of turn one. And a lot of yep. people are not very good at it. So Yep. So watch out for that big ass curb. Stay on the inside. Uh, and oh, that's good we, right there. You can see the blend line and everything. Good, yeah. good pause there, man. So you see the blend line on the right hand side. Everyone's jumping in there and everyone has to get sorted out before the top of the hill that's coming up in front of us. Um, to the right there is the motor chicane only used for motorcycles so they don't launch themselves over the hill. So don't worry about that. We are not using that one. So um, this corner is pretty stand- standard outside, inside, outside, normal racing line. Stop there. Oh, too late. Okay, we need to go like two frames at a time on how this thing goes. So this is over the top of a hill here and you can see the hill as we're coming up on it, stop. And so it's important to get as a lot of your turning done before you're gonna crest the hill because a lot of people go off on the left as they're cresting the hill here. This is turn two, three, I don't mm-hmm. know which one, two. two. Um, everyone goes off on the top of the hill because they get all excited to get the, after coming out of one they get going fast and they, they turn a little too early in two and then they wash out on the other side of two. So it's also kind of blind. So, yeah. So you don't, Agreed. you kind of don't trust where, where you're, where the turn is. So if you don't really know where you're going or who's around you, uh, it's, it's easy to go off there. Yep. Okay. So, um, yeah. So turn, uh, turn on, on, get your turning done on the early side here so that you've got a little room for when you're cresting the hill that you don't wash out completely um, because enough people have that once you get past the curving, it's a big like ditch there usually. And yes. that can damage the car. Yeah. So. Uh, and I'm going to mention that uh, turn one is nice and wide, the whole mm-hmm. one, two section. So there's plenty of room for activities. If you're going to, there's going to be people dive bombing. There's going to be people coming off the blend line. The, it doesn't get tight in here. So if you're doing what you need to do, you can really go to a, two, three across here. Yeah. Yeah. Two into three. It's all pretty wide. Yep. All right. So you're cresting the hill and then you're going to be going down the hill coming into three and lemons is going to use the chicane on the right. So pause here. Good. Here you can see the chicane on the right hand side. We are not going to go straight. We're using the chicane to slow everybody down, which is good when the lemons crowd with this many cars on it, especially. So, um, 
Yep, exactly. Excellent pointing. Here, where you need to do is you do need to cut into this apex on the first, the chicane goes right, then left, then right. Um, cut into that apex and you can be breaking as you're coming down in there. Your slowest point is going to be as you're turning left in the middle of the chicane. Mm -hmm, yep. Mm -hmm. And then if you slow down enough there, you then accelerate your way out of the chicane onto the straight between three and four. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to say here, not that the road is skinny, but the line is skinny. So you're mm -hmm. going to get in a line here and follow on somebody's bumper. Um, you're probably, even if you lose some time because you're going a little bit slower, it's better to follow someone through the chicane than try and pull a pass in it. Yeah. If you get someone slow enough, you can go too wide through there pretty easily. Um, but you know, you're going to need the power to pull out of it if you do. If yeah. You the yeah. car you're, you're... I, I was gonna say and the far side of the chicane is a great passing zone so it's almost better yeah. to wait yeah your as time you're coming and... in yes yeah, you're coming into the chicane be patient yeah to set yourself up for a run on the way out yeah absolutely okay okay so uh, the straight between three and four is a downhill than an uphill if it rains it ponds here and mm -hmm. then this is where great fun can be had a by river. your weight <laughs> yes splashing in other people's cars pause um, so turn four, this is, if we can go back like two seconds, this would be great. Turn four is very deceptive and that a lot of people, when they're not used to it, over slow for turn four, because you look at it and Absolutely. You it looks really tight and you can't see anything there. And you're carrying a lot of speed coming out of the straightaway that you've been in. Um, so mental, can you go just like for a second forward and, and stop again? Just hit play and then pause again. Yeah, great. So there you can see that like, it doesn't look like much when you're coming into it because of the way the camber is. Um, so you do take it like a normal corner, but you can kind of trail your brakes into this corner from the other one. You can break really late in four, trail your brakes in as you hit that apex. Because you'll find a lot of people do not use the track out for four because yes. they over break coming into it. Mm -hmm. But people may dive bomb in it. Uh, sometimes, but more often than not, you're going to have people over slow and then not realize you're passing them on the inside because they're already target fixated on the corner. So but Christy makes a valid point. If you see an orange BMW trying to take you on the grass, I'm sorry to say that part out. Loud. Oh, yeah. You know, that orange BMW is a car to watch out for. They've, they've proven that repeatedly. Um, <laughs> so as you come through four, you're going to track back out, but then the, you're going to have to get all the way back to the right for five which is a, a left-hander because you get back to the right and you break hard because if you carried good speed through four now you're gonna have to slow way down for the hardest turn on the track which yes. is the left-hander at five and, and slowest turn on the track yep um this is a, a pretty standard corner it's a little bit over 90 degree left it has a big curb on the outside that's initially helpful but if you go over the curb you're in a ditch and it is not helpful this is a place where a lot of passing will happen. If you have a faster car, just come up the inside, pass people on the inside, stay on the inside, rock your way out of it. You can see how big that ditch is on the outside. Though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Avoid but, that. I, but I'm glad he's on it. That is a very smooth curb, yeah, the curb and yeah. you will Absolutely use it. Use mm -hmm. Yeah. But if you're off, as our friend Matt discovered a few years ago, it will grab your wheel and throw yeah. your car. That's that's the other track, but yeah. The other track, oh, dang it. Sorry. Yep. I knew that. Yeah. All right. So, so bad. Yep. So now you're in a little straight between five and six. This is usually enough. Like you pull up one gear and then you're deciding, well, do I need to shift for the next one or not? I say, go ahead and shift because you're not going to break much for six, depending yeah. on how fast your car is. You know, you'll break a bit, but this is also a, um, an increasing radius corner. It looks tight at first, but it's better than and you think. Downhill ish. Slightly. Yep. Yeah, but... It goes downhill more after, after the corner. Uh, but they get, it's a fairly standard line. Nothing particularly exciting, except no, you can carry more speed than you think. This is coming into the corner before the condos, which is seven, which is a pretty hard right-hander. So you usually do have to break pretty substantially here for seven. Because once you go into seven, now you're going to, let's talk about the, the seven, eight, nine complex, because it's yes. all really Thank one you. corner. The condos are on the outside. That's how you kind of know where the condo corners are. Once you make the harder turn at seven, the, the turn opens up, but usually you are full on the gas through this whole corner as you make this long right-hand sweep. 
Coming into nine, though, you need to be aware that it's going to tighten up. So we're drastically, gonna the, yeah. We're gonna let's watch the videos through seven and eight, and then we'll 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 talk more about nine when we get there. Because seven and eight, once you break through seven, um, watch for track out at the outside of seven because a lot of people do, and it's trashed over there again, another big ditch. So there's through eight, and then pause. So now we're in nine. What I usually like to do is coming out of eight, once I'm kind of through eight and coming up on nine, I, I kind of just ease off and just co coast, but trail break really, it's, but without really the breaking it mm -hmm. so much because you need your line to tighten up. So if you're off the gas, you're slowing down a bit, your line is tightening up and you start to gradually trail into your brakes and you can pass a whole bunch of people on the inside here because they're hanging way to the outside. So I usually end up on the inside because I'm passing everybody. Yeah. Um, if you, if you screw this up, you're left. If you do yeah. this right, you're right. Yep. And even when I have nobody around, I don't go all the way out to the left before nine. I kind of stay middle, maybe middle, two middle, middle, yeah. maybe two thirds um, while trail breaking it and trying to get the car to rotate just a little coming into nine. Um, but always be careful here because quite often people are going to, push too wide and push out. It happens. I'd say every other lap, you're going to see someone do that. It happens all the time because they don't uh, know how much nine tightens up as you come into it. Watch the G meter. I want to see this thing. So yeah, it's a lot. So come through nine and now through 10, this is the octopus. This is a big, long sweeping left-hander. Looks like the octopus's head, everyone. Yep, That's why they call exactly. it the octopus. Depending on how your car is at steady state sweeper cornering, you can pass a lot of people in this corner. Mm -hmm. Like I used to do that in the Civic a lot. I just drive around the outside of people and you know go yeah, right where, around. Wherever them. people aren't, that is yeah. the right place to be on this. Yep. If there is no one around, here is a top tip from E1R. Hook your left wheel onto the curb. Yep. At 10. Yep. It is amazing how much more traction and how much more speed you will have. Is so about a third of the way into the quarter, the curb starts. You this. want to hook. Well, there are mind. listeners. Yeah, I know there are listeners. Hook your wheel on the curb. Do not go beyond the curb. But if you just stick your left side tires on that curb on the inside, it just grabs hold. And you hang on yeah. for dear life as you go around that corner. It's amazing. So when we had non-turbo, non-K Civic, you'd put your foot down a little <laughs> bit before where we're looking at right now. We'd do it like, like at you the know, start of the curbing. Like at the basically. start of the curbing. Yeah, yeah. And you would not lift your foot until turn one. Yeah. So this is a great sweeper. It's a great section. If you have a low horsepower car, if you have a Miata or a 1.6 liter Civic or, you know, a, a Docevo, I don't know what you got out there, what you're bringing. Just put your foot right to the floor here. Yeah. Because now you're coming out of 10 into just basically some S's that most cars can handle. Okay. You're going to have to watch traffic here because if someone got a really crappy run out of 10, now they're going to be offline for the S's and, and in and your way slowing down and in your way. Right. Um, but normally though, like you just kind of bounce off the two corners of the S's like the straightest line through S's basically it's, this is not complicated, you know, hit your apex, Little hit your left. apex right. and pause. Come down to the bridge. You can start to see now. You're fine. That was a good spot, Mental. Oh, sorry. I'm starting to preempt you because I know it's going to take a second. So you're good. Um, Just leave it there. Yeah. It's fine. Coming up to the bridge, you start to see. First off, this is how you get into the paddock is you could the cones there, the white line, get all the way right. It can be hard if you have a slow car and you're coming through the corner to get right here because people are passing you on the right. So sometimes a little forethought in coming through the octopus is going to be necessary yeah. to get you on the correct side of the yeah, track. Stick, stay on the outside of the octopus and stick your hand out because yeah. you're not, you're, you're going to get clipped on the S's. So it's yep. better to be on the outside for the entire S. Agreed. All right. So 12 is coming onto the straight after you come into the bridge. It is a deceptive corner from how it looks coming into it, but notice the curbing. You can see the curbing here. Just barely. This is friendly curbing. Run over it. 
Oh, yeah. I'm looking at this GT3 going, hey, that guy messed that one up. He's way off. Keep your left side tires on the blacktop. He did get there. Keep your left side tires in the pavement, but you can put the rest of your car isn't over that curbing something or don't they get bumpier at the very top like right if you go up and over them there's a problem yeah all the way to the end but it, the, the spot you want to be yeah is friendly curbing yep put the, put the car over it and, and this is like six eight feet wide like this yeah, is not like huge. normal curbing it's really it's a wide candy stripe almost your entire car can fit on it if you keep the left the side Civic ones could on fit on it pretty much yeah it could yeah. um and you should be flat out into this like once you turn in for this be flat out and it's going to take you several times through it to develop the fortitude to do it regularly and how much you can carry through there and then you're on the straight wave to people in the tower because everyone watches from the tower there and then break at the three ish depending on your car and there you go yeah that's a good track walk i like this video mental thanks for bringing this to us Every now and again. Excellent. We, we give mental crap, but he does a lot of the work for the show notes. Totally. He did it's all it. of it this week. Right. And it's very, so, it's, so it's really, it's really great because <laughs> so the rest of us are all thrashing right now. So <laughs> wonderful. All right. Any other thoughts on New Jersey motorsports before we wrap this pig up? Don't take the paddock spot right in front of a garage. It's not yours unless you have the garage. There's mm, good, good tons of, of paddock out there. Um, if you want power, tell the people at the gate when you're there, I want power. And that way they give you the like the, the, the little receipt doohick. you need so that then you cert then you look then you put your hazards on when you're there in your spot and a guy driving a Jeep will find you and unlock the power box where you are. That's how it historically has worked. Good thought. Um yeah, mental. If you didn't pay for power, don't try to take power. Uh, as much crap as we give New Jersey. The staff at NJNP are friggin' phenomenal. Uh, the paddock may not be open when you get there, so go to the bar because it's a great bar. That's a the, I do love the whole facility. It's a great, great yeah. place to be. Um, showers are in the hangar shaped building that's over where the track store is. Mm-hmm. Fuel mm-hmm. tanks as you come over the bridge, the fuel station is going to be on the right. It's the two big white tanks. That's where you buy gas. They have run out in the past, but you can go over the other track, but that's a pain. It's a long way away. Uh, the store there is pretty decent. They've got, they have ice. They yeah, have nice. all the supplies you generally need. Um, the track will, catering will deliver to your paddock from their restaurant. You just call them and tell them where you are and they'll bring it to you. Yeah. So that's always nice. And it's good. It's yeah. Good. If you got a hotel near the track, I'm sorry. They're not good. Yeah. I was going to say that there's not, much close to the track you have to drive into town it's a good you know even just go to the 15, closest wawa 20, well yeah. 15 minutes but it's not near anything because it's near a airport and a auto mo- motocross and but you can stop at blinker custard on your way and get some you ice cream. can do that <laughs> uh there's this place called the best sushi in town and i keep going this is like a one horse town it's probably the only sushi in town, probably. so I'm not that impressed. They're not lying. There's a there's a decent pizza joint downtown in uh, like the downtown area. I mean, like we, we went to. You, you know what? There's a lot of parts places. That's true. There's like four different parts places in town. But Sometimes you don't closest, really. Uh, junkyard, you do not want to go to. No, that's. Oh, oh they suck. No. Yes. Go to those. They are the worst. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But like yes. the O'Reilly's, the Auto Zones, all of them. Yeah. Eh. Yep. But yeah, whatever that place was, it sold the Firebird motor and the boat motor, boat and they sold yeah. somebody else a crap this motor too. Ver- Vern's. Yeah, just, all I'll terrible. Throw them, yeah, I'll just throw them yeah. under the bus. You yeah, guys. please. Vern's. Awesome. Uh, is it time for Hella Sweet or But Terrible? Sure. Yeah. I, yes. I have a Hella Sweet or But Terrible. Uh, I mentioned Good. last week we were talking about the my favorite new YouTube channel, Bid Nerds. I'm actually going to go meet John for a beer as soon as we get done with this. (laughs) Good. So you tell him that I am now their biggest fan and I want to listen to the show every day. Three or four shows. I'm a little behind. Uh, And they had some comments and I actually then saw a news article from Haggerty about it. And they, they, by the way, I should say bid nerds is a YouTube channel that says what's being sold on all the major auction sites, bring a trailer, rad for Monday, Monday through Friday, Friday, every day, 9am. 
Pacific Coast, uh, noon on the East Coast. Uh, you could you can get it on. I've I've had to watch it at Facebook on Facebook because they ban it on they banned YouTube at work. But you can watch it live and interact with them. Go. It's I. It is really interesting. Chris, did you just click the link? I see you checking it out. Oh, I've seen that one. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. So anyway, so um, they were talking. They they had a Z thirty one. That's the Z before us, and it made like thirty thousand dollars, and it wasn't even a great one. It was like a sort of well done one with the wrong wheels on it, and then they showed some two forties and some two eighties. And then they showed a turbo Z that got like forty or fifty thousand dollars, like a Z thirty two and ours. And they were suggesting that Datsun Nissan Zs might be the new nine eleven, where all of these high ones are making all of the cheap, crappy ones worth way too much money, and it's going to be the next car that you can't afford. So buy it now. Go buy a Z. And we're hella sweet, there. Hella sweet or but terrible. Did we potentially ruin classic? <laughs> mm, I no. hope you did. I hope you did. I hope somebody comes along and goes, what the hell were you thinking? Good like, on you. Like 10 years from now, are we going to like say, I bought one of them for $800. <laughs> we're going to say that anyway. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the guys you bought it from are the ones going, Damn it! Before Bubba went to it. before Bubba went to jail, we could have sold that thing and got him a good lawyer. Yeah. Well, that's why they sold it because they had a court date the next day. Uh, I don't think we ruined it because anyone will say like because we did an LS swap and they'll be like, oh, oh yeah, okay, LS swap, Improve. that's great. Yeah. I, but what if they get like money on the classic market? We don't have the one that everybody wants. Everybody wants a turbo. Everybody wants a T top. Even if it's an NA T top, we have a 2.0, which is the short one with no back seat, naturally top, aspirated. Which you want for racing. Top, which you want for yeah, racing, but, but that's but not, not the touring. one. Yeah. Yeah. Go I ahead, did Nizzle. like that NSX you listed, though. Oh, we're going to talk about that in a second. Oh, okay, good. Go ahead. Uh, I'll say if if you're worried about it, I can literally bring up three of them on my Facebook Marketplace for about three grand right now. Sure, not not They're, turbos, just yeah. The turbos are Z32s bringing... about the yeah. same caliber of the one you bought that you turned into a race car, except less rust. Yeah, uh, the turbo ones are getting silly money right now. They always kind of did because it was yeah. that well, was the, the like the the Japanese onslaught of supercars. Your twin turbo RX sevens, your twin turbo three hundreds, your twin turbo Supras, and, and the NSX. This was like all four of the big four made the supercars. Z's, the ZZ only one that's left that hasn't jumped yet. Like the RX seven has, the Supra has, the NSX obviously has. Um, the Z is like the next one, and the only one left after that is a three thousand GT, and there's like four. And of nobody them left. wants those, right? Yeah. Exactly. But I, I do remember the twin turbos never really. If you had a well maintained twin turbo, it never really got cheap. Yeah, they were always obviously the best one. So anyway, so I put in there a link, Chris, which you just saw. Chrissy, did you look at it yet? I did look at it. You yes. did look at it. So this is a 2005 Acura NSXT with a red exterior, same color as yours, and red a interior. dark red leather interior, like Oxblood. They said what the Honda name was, but to me, it's Oxblood. This is one of three this year that's red on red. Chris, do you want to say what it sold on Bring a Trailer? So <laughs> I, we, have can. To, we have to be clear on this. So I watched the actual auction. Oh, you did? Okay. Did. Tell <laughs> us about it. I, I am a Bring a Trailer <laughs> All right. I well, then you get, have to start watching the bid nerds because they the will daily, bash these these auctions. Honestly, and actually, Chrissy, if you're watching the auctions, they'll probably have you on as a guest on oh, Bid Nerds. Get out. You so know your, yeah. You'll I'm know a, your stuff. I'm a Bring a Trailer fan. I get the daily feed. I open them. I figure out when the which ones are expiring today. I show Chris every NSX that shows up. Just about every NSX. If not many interesting cars i ask for half of them um and i we've talked about the red on red and i did some research on it so i am intimately familiar with this all right and, so what do you want to tell us about it oh well and i said chris how much do you think it's going to sell for and he says mm, I think about 150 and i wow go to 150 so, yahtzee yeah, as they it, say on the well, show well it was uh because it was a, it's a low miles it was 18,000 miles which is yeah. super low uh, for 2005. And, uh, and I was like, wow, this red on red is 
terrible. And Chris is like, there are five of them. Yeah. Oh, I think so. I think it's th- well, I think it's three five, three, year. whatever the number they was. They were terrible. That's why there was five of them. No one wanted them. That awful. Way. Yeah. Uh, so uh, so that's my assessment. And now you started this with Chris. Chris, what did you think? I think we bought it a good time. That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go for that much when we don't sell it ever. Yeah. But, it won't. We have too many yeah. miles on it, but uh, yeah. Still, okay. you also won't reduce your value by driving it. No, no, no. not really. It's Nothing I have cool. anywhere to go. It sits in the garage with a cover on it now because we don't leave the house. Just rub it with a COVID. diaper and say, One day you're going to help me retire. Everyone yeah. in my house is vaccinated, so we're going to do stuff, crazy stuff soon. Right. Like Good. Go to a movie. <laughs> uh, and, and folks, seriously, bid nerds. At the, that's a, if you're at, at your at work and you get to YouTube, click on that. They they start about nine o'clock. They might be a little delayed. You know, big surprise. They have wire problems. Uh, they're both really interesting people. And if you haven't checked out Porsche Road Trip on Pluto TV, it's also supposed to be coming to NMSNBC. Definitely worth checking out. I, I finally got through the whole series. It it, it starts out very light, uh, ends very poignant, but uh, it's. It's more of, if you listen to the show, these are your type of people, just people yeah. that genuinely use cars as an excuse to bond with your friends. Yeah. If you like Porsches, you need to be watching Bid Nerds because they should call it Porsche Bid Nerds. Actually, today was, they, they, they admitted today was Porsche free. Oh, very good. I haven't seen yeah. today. I'm a couple of shows behind. So Okay. Yeah. We're, we're just hey, a little busy. Jeff, did you ever list your Mazda for sale or is that? Not yet. I just Casualty got an inspection sticker. Busy. No, no, I just I got the inspection sticker and I haven't listed it for sale yet. It's because I won't be able to show it this weekend. Yeah. Because we'll be at the probably. track. So we'll we'll take care of that. You should next probably week. bring it to the track. And, and yeah. And it. by the way, it passed inspection. I, I bought the car in 2012, 2013. I can't even remember. And I never had it inspected. So this is the first time it ever went to a New Jersey. How how old's the uh, intern? Uh, 14, 15. Okay, never mind. I'll say, yeah, the, the, whoever you was, you taught to drive, stick on it. Have them drive it up, put a for sale sign on it. I bet you don't take it home. Interesting. <laughs> Let's wrap this puppy up so I can go watch Loki. My son is waiting upstairs. Thank you for downloading us. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Everyone Racers. We also hope you'll join us in the world of driving, racing, and building because Everyone can be a racer. Even you, if you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe. It's totally free. Then go to iTunes and give us a five-star rating. If you'd like to talk to us now, right? Mental, you're on the bottom. Point down. Thank you. Right down there in the doodly-doo, talk to us. Uh, if you have any questions or show ideas, drop a comment on our Facebook page, everyone.racers, everyone racers, or email us at everyone.racers at gmail.com. You can text mental. 484-243-0455. Find us on Instagram or Twitter at everyone.racers. Thanks again, and I promise I won't be eating a sandwich next week, but we will still be here to talk about everything that happened at New Jersey Motorsports Park, including how we kept the, the shiny side up, or at least we kept the wheels down.